welcome back to Brewpig. So a bunch of people have been nervous that because we've now launched, we're going to be doing sailing and margaritas and swimming and doing dinghies and diving and things like that. While well, some of that may happen, seriously, this is Brewpig. We've got some building to do. More specifically, we've got about two years worth of building to do. Thank you to everyone for your lovely congratulations and comments. We really appreciate it. Life on the water has started. We're getting used to it and work continues. You look like you're a happy camper on top of your boat. <laughs> we had to get our little aluminium pontoon dinghy onto Brewpeg. In order to do that, the easiest way was to launch it at a local boat ramp, Birk and Jess then took it through the headlands, down the river, to meet up with Brewpeg. And because it was such a rushed launch, Brewpeg is a bit of a mess. So while we work to get the motor started and Brewpeg moving, the cleanup begins. Brewpeg was a sunken fishing trawler that was stripped out and ready for the scrapyard. She's just completed a 10 year rebuild that's brought her back to life. With the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and subscribers, she'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the description below. A few weeks before we launched Brewpeg, we had a red hot go at putting some chalk fast in our engine mounts. The engine was aligned, everything was beautiful, the stars were in their place. So we started pouring chalk fast. And then it started pouring into the bilge, and that really wasn't what we were after. The front mount worked okay, the back mounts, not so much. After the chalk fast debacle, we need to deal with that. So, it's time to rip the gearbox out, clean up the chalk fast, and then stick the gearbox back in. 20 minutes, we'll knock it over. The pressure's on, can it be done? <laughs> I need to be bouncing down the side of the boat or something. I need a roll. In the harness, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to do a barrel roll. Did it. Did it. Ah, oh, this is an Imperial motor because America. What am I doing? I'm not doing that up there. Right, I've just got some clearance now with that gone. Uh, I'm pretty much able to start working on unbolting this. So, but what I want to do before I do that is prop the engine up with some blocks underneath. We're going to leave the engine as it sits. And then uh, next step, we'll be moving this back, undoing the bolts uh, around the bell housing. And then we should be ready to just lift that straight up. There's not a huge amount holding this gearbox into the boat at the second. Okay, we don't want the engine going anywhere when we're lifting, so you might be able to see I've got a blue strap up there. It goes across the engine and comes down this side here. It's clamped onto the rib there and a rib over there. So it's locked down onto the front mount and the pieces of wood that we just put in. It's now time to work on the gearbox. Step one, let's get this uh, coupling moved back. So we're ready to lift. We've got our small chain block at the top there that does forward and back control. And the big one up here pretty much lifts the weight. We've got them both hooked onto the same purple strop. This strop can take one ton. Uh, and we, we've got this one connected with a big shackle to get the small hook around the big you know group of purple strops. This one can clip around and then we've linked everything together with a shackle here so they can't separate and do funny things. Uh, the only thing we don't think we can make is these here when we welded these on. Um, we think that we're going to run out of space here because the gearbox has to come back about 75 mil, three inches. Um, so we're going to take these off first, and then once we've done that, we're then ready to pretty much just lift it up and pull it straight back. It should be a pretty fast job once we've done those. There's not much holding this thing in; it's just sitting on its on its adjuster screws right now. We don't have to take these off either. Yeah. With the cellar door.
What's what's it struggling with? The silicon on the like where it glued to the steel or the chock fast? It's a silicon. Okay. But have a look at this. You can see where the chock fast has run past. Yeah. So it hasn't bound. Yeah, right. It's bound down there, down there, and just nothing in the middle. Hasn't yeah. it? Like this hasn't even touched. Hasn't, hasn't even touched. Yeah. yeah. That was in the middle, that's why we couldn't see yeah, it. Yeah. Pretty fast with this thing, eh? Yeah. We got the fan running, so it's quite noisy as well. But second coat of uh, Joe Domestic 90, the the etch that we use is down. We've yet to tackle the mount. We have to chip all of the crap off the mount. We'll probably take those off and just do the whole lot outside. It's just easier. Um, we're going to try and it's about midday-ish now. We're going to try and get another coat on this this afternoon. It's going to be our first top coat. So we need to get at least two top coats on that just to get rid of any um, like discoloration between you know where it was painted white and where we've chipped through. So back to almost having a white bilge again and then we'll get this back in the hole and start that whole process again.
that something else is connecting our keel cooling pipes to the engine. So under the floorboards, beside the Cummins and beside the workbench, we've got these two keel cooling uh, pipes. They come up from our keel cooling and go through. We need to bring the stainless pipes up. We need to link onto this pipe here and to this pipe just here. So we're going to do some wiggly stainless welding and we're going to have some rubber connections up at these ends here. I've made a few adapters, so this was a, I think it's two inch to three inch adapter, so I've made that, and that has to be welded onto that one there like that, and what that means is we end up with a big hose tail that uh, tapers down to a 60 mil pipe, because, spin round, this one here, just go that way around, so we've got quite a big pipe, it's about 80 mil o, uh, ID, so we need to get some silicon hose onto that and join that, and then this here has to come down to the right size to fit our 60mm pipes down here. So, hence the little taper gadget, so that's that one explained. Right, this one here, I need to weld this is 60mm and this is 60mm. I need to weld that one on there like that because we need to create this on the front here. We need to basically have the, the hose tail will be on the end. In fact, let me hold the hose tail on there. How fancy is that? CGI, look at that. So we need to basically get some silicon hose up there and join those two together. And this water pipe here is going to extend forward and then it's going to come down like that. And then it'll be pointing straight down. We can flow it down and around and sideways and into this tube here. So we'll get to that. But first off, let's get these hose connections done up the top and this one just down there. Right, that's those two tacked together. So three little cute wee tacks holding those together. So. Time to start carrying on the rest of the pipes. Next piece I've got to do is the extension, the straight pipe that goes off the bottom of that there. I've now cut this, so I need to tack that onto there, and we can start figuring out that piece of the puzzle. Right, extension welded in, and you can see I've got some purple silicon analog tape there. What I need to do is figure out where this guy here goes. I want to point it directly at that pipe. So, yeah, let's get that one welded in there, I think. Things have escalated, so we've got one circuit up and ready to go. Obviously not welded fully, it's all just tacked together. So next we need to bring this guy here, up, and then up to this pipe up here. So don't know how we're going to do it, we're going to try and keep everything sloping down so any bubbles work their way up to the top and then out to the um, uh, header tank that's going to be up the top. But uh, yeah. So this is where we finished up today, so we've got this guy sort of tacked together and making its rounds. This one here we'll work on tomorrow and I'll have that done. So tomorrow morning I'm going to be, this is an off cut, a little 45 degree came out of that bend there. So we're going to extend that one down to about there somewhere roughly. And then that'll just go vertical straight down there, parallel with this pipe here. We'll probably even put a little cross brace between the pipes. And then um, it'll follow the same path, so they'll be parallel the whole way around. And then up to this guy up here. Um, Burke on this side, he, we've got the bracket, so I welded that bracket together for the um, for the throttle. He started putting that in, but the holes are not quite the right size, so we're going to muck around. We've only got metric drills, and it's an imperial drill. It's a 916, which is 14.2 millimeters, and we've only got a 14 millimeter drill. So uh, we're going to put we've got an old crappy 14. We're going to just put it in and wiggle it around in the hole and see if we can 916 it. Uh, Duncan has been working on the box up here, so doesn't look like much has happened, but up in the wheelhouse a bucket load's been happening to get this talking and we've got a lot of progress up the front there. He's figured out the wiring diagram for the alternator, so we're taking our RPM signal off the alternator and that's going to be driving this RPM gauge here. And then we have another RPM sender, a Hall Effect sender, or proximity sender, which is basically this. Actually, I'll show you, that's a spear, that's what it looks like on the end, it's basically just, it looks blank but essentially it screws into the bell housing and counts the teeth on the flywheel. So as the flywheel spins, it'll count, I think from memory it's 103 or 107 teeth. I can't quite remember which one it is yet. Um, and then every time it counts that amount of teeth, it counts that as one revolution. So we're gonna install that there and wire that up. We're gonna have monitoring up on the bridge of the lubrication of the prop shaft and the rudder and that's based on shaft RPM so for every revolution um, there's so a small amount of grease has to go in so essentially every just pick a random number every 2,000 times the shaft spins around 
the, the shaft and the rudder will get a squirt of grease and that grease is measured out in different amounts depending on where it's going to so whether it's going to the um, the front gland packing up here or if it's going to the uh, white metal bearing down the back end of the shaft or if it's going to the self lubing self lubing bearings that are in the e, uh, rudder stock gosh end of the day I'm tired um, so yeah so Daniel has built a manifold that basically meters out different amounts you'll see a bit more of that soon when we start installing it but this Hall effect sensor that is the Cummins um, Hall effect sensor is actually going to also become our shaft RPM sensor as well. I'm going to crack on in the middle of the day with the last of the water pipes. Right, I've got to get this one that leaves the top of the engine. Got a straight coming down here, and then we're going to try and link it to this area of the boat down there. This whole thing feels very surreal. I'm sitting on a boat, rocking gently in the marina, building an expedition trawler. Um, this is something that I never thought I'd be doing in my life at all. Uh, I thought that I'd be doing some job that I hated and I absolutely love doing this this is like a literally a dream come true I'm living something that I never thought was possible um, these guys behind me every single person on this wall and every viewer out there make this possible and I don't necessarily know if we express it enough just how grateful we are like look at this just absolutely stunning engine and gearbox and boat and project is is here because of you guys I'm incredibly grateful. I was just sort of looking around. There's a few jobs on the go. We're tidying a whole bunch of stuff up. Uh, we're getting the main engine in with the chop fast. Um, we have to redo that. We made a mistake and we've got to do it again. So what, you know? This is a bloody enjoyable thing no matter what, even if we make mistakes. We've got our little air-cooled generator that's over there um, that's about to be fitted into the fiberglass box that I thought would be years away before we do that. We've got an awesome compressor system that We've, we've got we've got an amazing welder that's been donated by Unimig. This is just this blows me away. So thank you. I'm not going to ask you to join Patreon or subscribe or click the bell or any of the normal things. I just want to say thank you. Like this is something that is is kind of unbelievable to happen to somebody that you guys have made possible for us. And we want to do everything that we can to actually bring you along with us. Brewpig won't be changing in terms of being in the water and cruising and turning into a boat that's full of margaritas and bikinis. I'm so sorry, I, I won't be wearing a bikini for you. I know some of you have been holding up for that, but that won't happen. Um, what will happen is the continued gratefulness of us. And our entire crew is just humbled by what you have made possible, so thank you. Things have progressed. So we've got this top pipe running down to a 45, and I put a little brace on here. You can see bolted it onto the, the water filter over there just so that it's really stiff at the top. Comes down parallel pipe here then we're going to do a 45 like that I'm going to rejig these two so that they face each other I would love to have done it like that and then done a curve and you know a slight 45 in the air and basically parallel it up to this but I only have one of these left so we are going from there straight across to that guy there so it'll be a parallel run like that there we have it functional pipe work right so we've got two paths coming up here, one to the lower pipe and one to the upper pipe. You can sort of see here, we've got just silicon pipe holding it all together at the moment, but everything's tacked. We've got a little brace in here to support the weight. That's onto a six mil plate, so that's gonna be nice and strong. These are all nicely mandrel flowy bends, etc. So they go straight out to our keel cooling under the floor down here and then round the loops of keel cooling and then back in. So we've got to start welding all this stuff. You can see we've got tack welds holding everything together in place, but we need to fully weld that out so it doesn't leak. Now, Easiest way is crack these two uh, flanges off here, undo those, and then we can somehow wiggle these pipes out. I've never had these out before. I've basically built them in place, so don't know how we're gonna go here. Let's see if we can pull them out. Now, water is gonna piss down here, and it's gonna be disgusting sort of orange colored rust water. Don't stress, these keel cooling pipes are getting a full flush before they go into the engine, and we're gonna be using proper decent um, coolant that's uh, like common certified coolant. So, Let's get this out and let's start this process. Alright, so the cork gaskets on these seals has broken down so I'll replace the gaskets with rubber while I'm at it.
Okay, so floorboard up, we've got our two keel cooling flanges. So we need to basically get some water in there and start pumping out the crappy water that's in there and get some clean water so that we can start the coolant process. We've got our hose jammed in with a purpose-built um, hose jammer. Okay, so we've got the chest under one Put it in there, maybe. Yeah. With the Mark Bar 1 0 motto. Yeah. Right. So that's what we're wanting. We're going to get that sort of crappy brown water coming out of those tubes. We want it to be just nice, clean, fresh water that's coming out. Airbx welding together our coolant reservoir tank. This used to be our old tank, but we've chopped off two thirds of its capacity. We're shrinking it down. We're going to be mounting it above the new Cummins. It's Wednesday morning. The guys are all still on the boat. Duncan, Beck, Jess, me. Uh, we're planning to push pretty hard today. We've got our last list before we can start the engine. Chock fast. Uh, the final can of chock fast is arriving tomorrow, probably about 11 o'clock in the morning. So we are hoping to have the engine capable of starting tonight. We're going to start the engine tomorrow, do our final checks on our system. Then we're going to do the alignment, do the dams. We're going to water test. So we're going to sit water inside the dams and let it hold for two to 24 hours, something like that. Um, and if it holds water, doesn't leak out, then we're gonna pour the chop fast the following morning. All of this is building up. We're hoping to do sea trials on Sunday. Before I zoom down there, more and more of these gauges are coming alive. So now we've got start voltage showing up on the bridge, house voltage, house current. We've also got a camera. So this is showing the sticking on, it's in, sitting in the window of Brewpig's wheelhouse looking out the front. So you can see that's the front of Brewpig there. Maybe I can, no, I can't, let's go to cameras, here we go. There we go, so that camera there is basically showing, that will end up showing the engine room, but for now it's just sitting, showing, you know, sticking out the window of the dash. But that's what Duncan's working on today, is getting that to be more alive. Beck's working on keel cooling pipes, so he's uh, getting the main keel cooling pipes hooked up to the engine so that we can get some coolant in the engine, and I'm working on the reservoir. So this is our um, little aluminium box that's gonna be our coolant reservoir. That it's going to sit roughly up the top of the engine here and feed down down here into the water pump area. First job for me is I've drilled a hole in this tank. I need to get this little hose tail, put it up there and weld that guy in. So just a little bit of aluminium tick. We'll get that done and then we can start working on the brackets to make this boltable to the engine. So this box used to be mounted up against the roof and that was all good and well except for when you wanted to put any liquid into this thing it was a nightmare because you've got to try and funnel something up to the roof. It's fine if you've got a pump but if you're trying to pour something it's really difficult. So what my plan is actually to mount it about there somewhere roughly and we're going to come down onto the engine and on top of the water pump here we've got these two great big mounts so I think when these are a truck engine from memory they have a bracket up here and an air filter or something along those lines. Um, big solid mount though, big chunky bolts, I think they're half inch bolts, so um, we'll build something off these to, to brace the front and then I'll brace the back somehow, probably come back onto this, maybe maybe back onto that water thermostat manifold, something like that, but I'll, I'll do sort of like multiple braces, but the bulk of the weight will be taken on these front ones. Okay, change of plan, these legs are going to look ugly and Bert came up with a bloody good idea, let's put it on the roof but drop it down, so we're going to uh, make 175 mil Pick long. Uh, legs and they're going to come from the roof straight down and it's going to bolt essentially in the same place but mount to the roof rather than to the engine. All right I've chopped these guys up so these are um, three uh, just aluminium angle 50 by 50 by 6 mil um, mounts that are going to become they're going to weld onto that tank and they're going to be bolted to the roof. With well, the three pieces of angle that we just cut so what I'm thinking weld them onto the corner of the tank and then we can bolt that to the roof and that sort of orientation there so one on either corner and then one at the back. So let's get these front ones welded in, we'll bolt it up and then we can figure out how to do that back one. 
While I've been working on that box, Birk has ripped this floorboard up and we're going to start fitting these pipes back to the engine so that we can get some uh, coolant into the engine once we've got this box all plumbed up. So we need to get different hose clamps for uh, the pipes that we've got. We use, like to use these T-clamps. They're a, um, a blimmin' bulletproof stainless hose clamp. Um, we, you can get good Jubilee clamps like these guys here. This is what Carl has used, the proper silicon hose clamps. But they're very hard to get where we are. Um, so we don't have access to these guys. So we use T-clamps. We use them on everything pretty much. Um, love these things. Absolutely hate cheap Jubilee clips. compared to the small ones. Okay. Any talk you want on those? Hey? Any talk you want on those? Uh, no. No ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, what are you, how are you doing? Uh, pipes are on. There we go, a couple of manky old welds on there, but that will be the front mounts. Then we're going to do a vertical at the back that will do the back end of this tank. So this Donaldson air filter casing has this little plastic thing, it actually used to sit that way around, so it was a nice scoop to collect stuff from the engine room and put it into the air filter. So we're getting rid of that and we're going to put a mesh over top of that. So for now you'll be able to see the air filter, which is kind of cool, we can see how dirty it is. Um, but uh, we'll get a mesh over there to protect bits from falling in there. But we can pretty much get away on a boat like this, you can, you can get away with a pretty basic air filtration system. But we've got a fairly substantial air filter in here, this is actually off a truck. So this is a Donaldson filter housing and then we've got uh, over there in the corner we've got spare Donaldson filters for when we need to change this guy out. I'm pretty pleased with myself. Here. You missed out a word that you said earlier. Yeah, I said please twice. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, it's a strong word. Yeah, it is a strong word. So what I've been doing is, um, oh, that's kind of slow. Um, is uh, connecting through or simulating the uh, flywheel pickup for the, uh, the tachometer. Bang. Oh. That was me. That's the only thing in the bilge we've got to clean up. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it's right. spotless apart from that. You can't see the rest of the step <laughs> right now. 
Uh, so the way we're testing it is, is I've got this oscilloscope that's generating a signal which simulates the flywheel passing the sensor uh, down, uh, down here. And uh, so this roughly simulates the 103 teeth on the flywheel going past the Hall effect uh, sensor here. That's then going up to the NMEA box, uh, into the tachometer input. It measures RPM in terms of hertz. So I'm forever in my head converting revs per minute to revs per second. Um, but I don't know if you can zoom in there, Damien. Um, but this is now the data which is coming from the ridge. And uh, what you'll be able to see is as I adjust the simulated signal here, and there are the revs per second changing as we go. So that proves we've got connectivity all the way, almost from the sensor, uh, us through NMEA up to the bridge. Uh, that's the data hub I'm looking at remotely. And if we had a look at the gauge on the dash, it would be actually moving uh, right now. Fantastic. And that is the first sensor simulation <laughs> coming off the engine. Um, and just to, to show you very quickly, I'll show you the signal coming off this sensor. There we go. So this is the sensor that picks up the teeth on the flywheel. Uh, this unit has 103 teeth uh, per full revolution of the, the flywheel. So as each of the teeth go past this sensor, then there's a little tiny uh, induced signal uh, coming out of that, which is what's being picked up by the tachometer. So these uh, cutters here are steel. And if you can see the screen there, as I'm just running the still not quite touching but you can see there's a jump in the trace there which means there's just a actually it's about half a volt uh, being produced as i move the pliers backwards and forwards so each time one of the 103 teeth goes past we get that signal and that's the signal that i've been simulating uh, which we're now reading up on the dash so i'm pretty pleased with myself we're going to press on with everything needed to start the engine so we can get our sea trials done in the next few weeks. Thank you for all your help, Duncan and Tom. You got ice like summer sky. If you smart, good kill, I die. And now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.